Yellowstone National Park possesses some beautiful natural features that just enrich our lives when we get a chance to see it. But behind the beauty, there is a sinister problem that lays dormant right now, just waiting for the right time for it to emerge. And when it does, we must be prepared. Because in Yellowstone, there is a massive super volcano there. It may not erupt very often and to the point where we see it, but these small little geysers we see are just the little signs of the activity below the surface. Although it happens often, these little geysers that come up with steam, they hidden, show a hidden problem of this massive super volcano. But when the super volcano does erupt, it will be disastrous for us. There is a map here that we have. It shows how much area will be affected by this super volcano if it does explode. And it will knock out huge parts of our agricultural system in the United States. Especially the breadbasket of the United States. So when this a super massive volcano erupts, we must be prepared. And we must prepare ourselves by planting plants that can survive in the future after it explodes. And that will provide us with food. And plants that we should plant in such a scenario are fruit plants such as we can do blueberries and raspberries that we can store the seeds for. We can do small gardens like tomatoes and string beans that we can grow ourselves. And maybe we can save some of the seeds of apple trees and after many, many years we can start to grow apples. But the idea is that we must prepare ourselves because if that volcano erupts, we need to have a plan to defend and to make our own food for ourselves. This is an exceptionally hardy tree here. This is a ginkgo tree. And this has a nice story to it. Uh, there was a student here on campus at Delaware Valley College, which is now going to be Delaware University. And this, this student many years ago got really mad at the trees and decided that he didn't like them anymore. He was going to kill them. So he took a chainsaw many years ago and he girdled, went all the way around this tree with the chainsaw to try to kill him. And he did, completely girdled it with cutting with the chainsaw all the way around it. And uh, as you can see, the tree survived. But when it first happened, the professors everywhere were freaked out. They're like, oh no, we can't let these old trees here die. We don't have any ginkgos around. We can't replace them. So they went out here with special grafting tools and they tried to bridge grafting the bark into here to try and make it connect again. So uh, they did that for just about all of them and they tried. And as much as they tried, none of the bridge grafts worked. But the uh, ginkgo was so resilient in being taking abuse that it could create new callus wood and it bridged the gap onto it. So even a chainsaw girdle doesn't kill this tree. Here are some other ginkgos on Ginkgo Lane that were attacked in the chainsaw massacre at Delaware Valley College a number of years ago. The trees did heal over very well as they can sustain a lot of damage and keep thriving. This one was actually chainsawed around twice and still survived. Now if you need green ginkgos and you have a street a tree application where you need to have a real sturdy tree, we do sell them and grow them. We're in Doylestown, Pennsylvania and McNinville, Tennessee. And we have big ginkgos. If you want a big one, you can come to Highland Hill Farm and we can supply you with big ones. And when you get a big one, you're going to need a crane because we have monster ginkgos. But we also have some ginkgos that are approximately two inches in caliper. This is Mike with our ginkgos at Highland Hill Farm in Fountainville, PA. This is our two inch caliper ginkgo. It's a nice tree. It's a hardy tree. It's going to survive. It'll live a thousand years. You'll never see the end of the ginkgo once you plant it. 